In the last video, we uh, started considering the effects of uh, harmonically oscillating perturbation and what our uh, first order per perturbation treatment uh, predicted for the probability amplitude of transitioning from some state ket i to some state uh, ket f. We ended up with uh, this complicated looking expression for the probability amplitude. And we're going to explore this in two different cases. In this video, we're going to look at the uh, what will turn out to be the phenomenon of absorption, which is the case when uh, omega of i minus omega, so the, um, so over here, just to remind you the, um, the form of a perturbation was as follows. It was on between some time zero and TF. Omega is the angular frequency of the oscillation. Okay, rewriting this, uh, we get that EF minus EI. So the energy of our final state minus the energy of the initial state we started in, minus H bar omega, approximately equal to zero. So what that means is EF is roughly equal to EI plus H bar omega. So if we were to draw this on uh, an energy line, we have our energy EF over here. And uh, this energy, because omega is positive, this energy of the final state is higher than the initial energy by a factor h bar omega. So what this indicates is a case where our system, which was in state i, has absorbed some energy from the perturbation, usually in the form of a photon of energy h bar omega. And this has caused it to transition to a higher energy state with energy EF. Okay, so this is uh, absorption, usually of radiation. So in this case, in this limit, uh, the term with omega i plus omega, so this term over here, it's, uh, it's negligibly small compared to uh, the term with omega fi minus omega. And what this means then is we can neglect this term in the face of this one, and that will simplify our expression. Okay, so we've gone from this complicated looking expression to something a little easier to deal with. And we're going to massage this a little bit to get into a more convenient form. So we're going to factor out a half a phase from this complex exponential. So now we have divided by two over here. That leaves us with a similar quantity here, except divided by two. This minus one now becomes minus omega fi minus omega tf divided by two. All this divided by this energy, this uh, frequency difference. Okay, so we've just taken out this term from this expression over here. Now this is turned to look a lot like uh, a sine function. So we're going to add some terms to uh, 
transform it into a sign function. So we need an extra factor of 2i at the top so that we get a 2i at the bottom. Okay, so now we get uh, a little bit of a simpler expression or at least one that we can study more easily for the probability amplitude. What this means then is the, uh, the probability of finding a state in uh, some final state different than our initial state i is the square modulus of this expression over here. which uh, is given by the following. So this part is just uh, taking the square modulus of these quantities over here. The four comes from the square modulus of two i. We lose the complex number. Uh, the phase goes away by, take, by uh, finding the magnitude of this expression. And we're left with sine squared omega of i minus omega tf over t over two over omega phi minus omega. Remember here, this uh, tf is uh, how long we apply the perturbation for. So it's a constant, but we can vary it by applying the transition for longer or shorter times. This is for EF is equal to EI plus H bar omega, or roughly equal to this. And this is the phenomenon of absorption. We're going to study this expression in terms of two different uh, experimentally tunable variables. We're going to study its behavior in terms of TF, the time that we apply the perturbation for in the next video. And then in the video after that, we're going to study uh, this expression in terms of the angular frequency of the perturbation, which we can also tune by uh, choosing a different frequency of, of light, for example.